In this video, we're going to learn about why null terminated strings are considered unsafe. So in C, strings are null terminated. What that means is that strings are a sequence of characters where the last character is a special null terminator. So if we declare a car array called string of length eight, we could store the string ABCD into this car array. What we would have is string at the index zero is equal to A, string at the index one is equal to B, string at the index two is equal to C, string at the index three is equal to D, and then string at the index four is equal to the special null terminator character. And this character signifies the end of the string in C. So that's why we say strings in C are null terminated. Now, most languages don't do it this way. And there's a good reason why. Null terminated strings tend to be much more error prone. Let's go over some examples as to how and why. So first, let's include the string.h library. This library includes functions for working with strings, including the string length function, strlen. Then down here, we'll output the string. We'll have printf string colon percent s to output a string followed by a new line with backslash n and we'll output the string. Then we'll call the string length function to output the length of the string. So we'll have printf length colon and then percent zu to output a size underscore t type value followed by backslash n for a new line. Then we'll call the string length function strlen and we'll pass it our string as an argument. And this function is going to return the length of the string, not including the null terminator character. So it's going to be four. And the type is technically size underscore T. So here we have percent ZU. So right now, if we save the program and compile it and run it, then we'll get here string ABCD and length four. So both the printf function and the string length function are completely dependent on this null terminator character actually being there. If the character is not there, these functions may not function as expected. So if we take out this character and then we save the program and compile it and run it, now we'll get string ABCD question mark and length six. And we're getting results now that we could say are unexpected or incorrect. And it's not that printf or string length are doing things wrong. They're functioning exactly as they're supposed to. The problem is if we, as the programmer, somehow forget to put in the null terminator or somehow write our code such that the null terminator may not be there, then we can run into these kinds of issues. And the error we're getting could actually be much worse than this. So the way the printf function and the string length function work with strings is that they go through the string one character at a time until the null terminator character is encountered. So if there's no null terminator, those functions could keep going through memory one character at a time. The issue is eventually they'll run into spots of memory that we shouldn't access and our program could actually crash. So the error could actually be much worse than just getting a length of six. We could have our program crash. Now the null terminator character is really just the integer value zero. So here, when we store the null terminator into the index four, it's really just the integer value zero that's being stored into that index. So what this means is that in practice, functions like printf and string length that depend on the null terminator character being there to end the string will often not go on forever and ever until the program crashes, accessing spots in memory that they shouldn't. Because in memory, what we often have is the value zero. So right now we have a car array called string. And in the first four bytes of that car array, we've stored the characters A, B, C, and D. And then in the four bytes after those, we don't actually know what's in the car array. The value zero could be here, or it might not be there. We don't know. And in the bytes that come after that car array, we could also have the value zero. So what could happen is a function like printf or the string length function 
which depends on the null terminator being there, may still work in a sort of fluke way, in a sort of by chance way, if one of these values is zero. So very often those functions are not going to go on forever and ever accessing characters and memory because they're going to encounter a zero and they're going to stop. But we can't guarantee it. We don't really know what's going to happen. So this is why null terminated strings are considered unsafe. When we use null terminated strings, our program may actually produce correct results even if we've done things incorrectly. We may get errors sometimes. We may also get errors that don't really crash the program, but just produce results that are incorrect. Bugs like this that occur only sometimes and may occur in different ways are often some of the most difficult to trace and find and fix. And it's easy to say, well, just use null terminated strings correctly. But in practice, we know that programmers will make mistakes. And that becomes all the more important when you're working on larger programs with larger numbers of people. Eventually, someone is likely going to make a mistake. And there's all kinds of mistakes we can make when working with null terminated strings. So for example, let's say that we did include this null terminator correctly. If our code somehow accidentally inserts the value zero at some index in this car array, that's going to terminate the string earlier. So if we save the program now and compile it and run it, we'll get the string AB with the length two because this zero value here is going to terminate the string earlier. There's all kinds of mistakes though that we can make. One very common mistake is to copy a string into a buffer that's too small to store the string. And buffer is just sort of a generic term for an array or block of memory that's used to store things. So let's say that we have codes of length eight. What we could do is think, well, I have a code of length eight. So I'll declare a car array called code of length eight to store codes like that. So we've made a mistake already. We need an additional character to store the null terminator character if our codes are of length eight, then we could have some source string. So here we'll have car source and we'll have an array and we'll store the string with the numbers from one to eight in the string. Then we'll have string copy. So we'll call string copy, which is a function in the string.h library. And we'll copy into the car array code, the source string here. Now this source string actually has nine characters because we have the eight characters here and then the null terminator character is actually there as well. But we're going to try to copy that string into the code car array, which is only of length eight. So we should expect a problem. So here we'll output with printf code. We'll have code colon percent s backslash n and we'll output code. And if we save the program and compile it and run it, then this time our program crashes. And while both of these examples are a little bit contrived, they're both typical errors that we see when working with null terminated strings, where maybe a buffer is just not large enough, or maybe a null terminator is just not there. Maybe because we got the data from some external source. So what can we do to more safely work with strings that are null terminated? Ultimately, it's on us to be aware of the fact that we have these issues, but there are functions that can help. So in the POSIX library, there is a function called strnlen, and this here is meant to be a safer version of the string length function. So we could actually call this function. So here, instead of calling strlen, we could call strnlen, and this function accepts an additional argument, the max length. So here I could say eight. And the way this function works is it's going to try to find the length of the string, but it's not going to check past the index seven. So it's only going to go eight characters deep into the string looking for the null terminator. 
So even if somehow the null terminator is not there, if this second argument is the size of our buffer in terms of the number of characters it can possibly store, we know this function is not going to access memory that it shouldn't. We could test it. So here, we'll make this car string is equal to, and we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So altogether, this car ray and this string now have 12 characters, but we'll call str n len with string and eight. So this function is only going to check up until here for the null terminator, and it should return a max length of eight. We'll also comment this out and comment this out as well. We'll save the program and compile it and run it. And now we'll get a length of eight. So that function is in the POSIX library. There's also a strlen underscore s function that you may find in some C compilers and is part of C11. So if you're unfamiliar with it, the POSIX library is basically a library of extra functions that's available on some compilers and some systems. Now there's other functions that are intended to make it safer to work with null terminated strings. So there's also a str ncpy function. In this function, we'll copy a maximum number of characters from the source to the destination according to a third argument. So we could have here seven as the third argument. And now this function will copy a maximum of seven characters from the source to the destination. Now it would still be on us to make sure the null terminator character is there. So we could have code at the index seven is equal to the null terminator to make sure that after copying these characters here, we put the null terminator as the last character of this car right here, the last character in the string. Then we could output code here. We could save the program and compile it and run it. And we'll get there. The code is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So while the code is still not the eight character code that we may have wanted, at least this way, we prevented the worst case scenario of the program crashing from occurring by using the function strncpy and by inserting our own null terminator. So using library functions like this that access null terminated strings with the help of some limiting argument is one way to make it safer to use null terminated strings. And when we write our own code to work with null terminated strings, we should do it in a way that's safe. So for example, let's make two functions to output a string one character at a time. We'll make one function that's unsafe and one function that's safe. We'll have here void print cars, and this one is going to be the unsafe function. It's going to accept a string as an argument. Then we'll have a function called void print cars safe. This is going to be the safe version it's going to accept a string as an argument, and it's going to have a second parameter of type size underscore t called n. And that's going to be sort of our limiting argument. We'll copy these, and then down here, we'll supply definitions of these functions. So the unsafe function is going to have a counter variable i that will initialize to zero then we'll have a loop. We'll say while the string at the index i doesn't equal the null terminator, that means we haven't reached the end of the string. And we'll output here the character at the index i with car percent c backslash n, and we'll output the character in the string at the index i, and we'll increment i with each loop iteration. So this function is going to keep on printing out each character in the string until i eventually reaches the null terminator and then the function is going to stop. So we could have a string up here. We'll have a car array called, let's say, bad string of length three. 
then we'll have bad string at the index zero is equal to lowercase a, and we'll have bad string at the index one is equal to lowercase b, and bad string at the index two is equal to, let's say, the null terminator. Then we'll call print cars, and we'll pass it bad string. And everything should be okay this time. We'll also define this function as basically nothing right now, just so we don't have any issues. So if we save this and compile our program and run it, now we'll get a b here and everything's okay. But let's imagine now that instead of the null terminator here, we have c. And then let's write to an index that we shouldn't. Well, if here, bad string at the index three is equal to uppercase E. So here we've actually written uppercase E one character beyond the length of this car array. So this is not really even in the car array. Really, the last character in the car array proper is lowercase c here. But because this function is going to stop at the first null terminator, in other words, the first zero value in memory, it should actually keep printing and output this uppercase E here. So we'll save this and compile our program and run it. And we do get a warning, but we'll run it and we'll get here A, B, C, and then uppercase E. So we got a compiler warning because here we're writing past the actual end of the array, but our function here just keeps outputting. So what we need to do is write a safe version of this function. So we'll copy this code here and we'll paste it into our safe version of this function. And what we'll do is have an additional check. We'll have and i is less than n. So now we're going to say that n is the size of this buffer here. It's the maximum number of indexes available in that buffer the maximum number of characters that buffer can store. And now this loop is going to stop if we reach the null terminator or if we hit the size of the buffer. So now we could try print car safe. So here we'll call print car safe. And because our buffer is of length three, we'll pass in three here. Now, if we save the program, and compile it and run it, we'll get here car A, car B, and car C. So now our safe version of the function is preventing us from going beyond the size of our buffer. So these are the kind of checks that we need to make if we're going to safely use null terminated strings. Now, most modern languages do not use null terminated strings. The reason why C does has a lot to do with memory. So memory used to be very expensive and storing a single byte as the null terminator to end the string was actually a pretty efficient way to do it. Storing something like the length of the string instead, which is essentially what more modern languages do, is going to take more bytes. It might take four bytes or eight bytes. So essentially a major reason why C has null terminated strings was to save memory. Now, more modern languages were developed at a time when memory had gotten cheaper. At the same time, programs were getting larger and larger, and the safety and correctness of those programs was becoming more and more of a concern. But in any event, in C, we do have null terminated strings, and they can be considered unsafe, but we can make them safer to use. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers including courses to help you develop C programming projects.